Okay, now let's talk about methods in protocols. Let's create a stack protocol with two methods, push, pop, and a new variable, count. The only type required here will be int for all the values stored here. We create a read-only count, and let's create here push and pop. Okay, in order to create a protocol here, the only thing we had to do is just create the declaration of the protocol, and that's it. We don't have to create any body or any bracket here. That implementation will be required for the concrete type, which means a class or struct. However, if we want to classes and also structs can modify our data here, then we will require to use another keyword here to reflect that for structs. Let's use mutating before func keyword. Mutating is used for structs to reflect that that particular method will modify the struct. And as you remember, structs are immutable by itself, which means that this method will say to Swift that this struct needs to be recreated again with this new data, okay? That's why we require to set a specifically mutating. If we don't set this mutating in the methods, we cannot modify any struct, okay? And this will be basically required only for classes. But in this example, we want to classes and a struct can confirm this protocol. So let's see that in action with a concrete implementation. Okay, for my stack, let's add an array property to save all the data in this object. This will be an array of ints. Okay, cool. Now for count, the only thing we have to do is returning the counter of how many values are here. For that, let's create a computed property. Now for push, since that Arrays in Swift are basically stacks. It's really simple to implement this. The only thing we have to do is call append from value array. Yeah, let's use this method and add the element. That's it. That's the only requirement to create a push for a stack. And what about pop? It's also really simple too. The only thing we have to do is call value.pop last. And if you check the return value here, yeah, it's an optional int, so we are good to go. Now, let's create this, but now using a class. Actually, we can copy and paste the exact implementation. But the only difference here is that we don't require mutating here because, well, this is a reference type. We don't care about that. That's it. As you can see, yeah, this, this implementation is really straightforward. But keep in mind, remember, that if you want to modify your data inside a struct, it's required to you to confirm a protocol using a mutating declaration for your methods. All right, let's create one more example for methods in protocols, but this time using an enum. Let's create a protocol toggable and a mutating function called toggle. Yeah, that's it for this protocol. Now, let's create a new enum and confirm this toggle protocol. Let's call our enum on off switch. Let's create two cases, on and off. And of course, let's implement toggle method. As the name implies, the only thing we have to do is just change the value of this enum depending on if it is on, let's turn it on off and backward. That's it, but look at this. Yeah, we cannot assign new values here because self is immutable 
Again, this is a value type. We can now modify this one is created. For now, we need mutating. There you go. The error is gone. And now we can use our enum value without any issue. There you go. We started with on and now it's off. Cool. We can also create initializers in protocol. So let's create a new protocol lockable with an initializer for file name and a function for lock. The same case like methods, initializers don't require any body implementation. That will be a work for the object confirming this protocol. For this example, let's create a class confirming logable. Let's create a class called logger and see what happens. Okay, let's add another variable here, a private variable for saving file name. And let's initialize that variable in this initializer. That's pretty much it, but as you can see, we have a required keyword here that we didn't add before. Why this is required? Because if you try to subclass this logger, that subclass also requires to conform this logable protocol. And the only way to force that class to adopt that protocol is, is forcing the implementation with this initializer. That's one thing you will have to do every time you create a new initializer that is a requirement for a protocol. But this is only for the case of class. For a struct, you don't require this. One common thing to see in Swift is extending a type. And for case of protocols, you can extend a type and confirming a protocol from an extension too. This is a really cool way to organize your code. So let's see an example. Let's create an extension of soccer player. Now, let's add a new protocol here. This time, let's use one from Swift standard library and we will use comparable. Comparable is used when you require to compare objects, complex objects, in a really easy way. Yeah, by default, you cannot compare soccer player directly. You will have to compare score, nickname, or any default type in Swift that by default are also conforming comparable protocol too. But if you want to compare a complex object, like soccer player in this case, then you should tell to comparable how to compare that and what does mean less than comparison. After that, the rest of comparable operators will be inferred. In this example, let's use score property to get who is a better player based on that criteria. Here, you will have the two objects to be compared. The only thing you have to do is returning a boolean result from a score comparison. Let's start from the left side and use its own score value here. Score is an int value and it's already conforming comparable too, which is great. Let's do the same but from the right side. And that's it, we're good to go. Now let's see this in action. Let's create another two objects from score player struct and try this out. Okay, now let's compare these two objects. Let's use an if else. Okay, let's run this. Yeah, as you can see, we just compared these objects directly without using score or any other variable directly. This protocol has the right information to execute this comparison and return the correct result based in our custom comparison. By the way, don't kill me. I love both Cristiano and Messi. That's all for this video. We just covered a lot of things for protocols, but that's not all. In the next one, we will cover protocols as type, 
how to use them, and more about how to restrict protocols to only classes, for example. For now, I would like to say again, thank you for your support, and don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Remember, use the comments down below if you want to leave your feedback about what kind of video you want to see next. That's all for me, thank you so much, and have a great day.